The last story, the incident that we'd like to make mention of is a very beautiful story in Surah Al-Kahf where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of the time when Musa alayhi salam was asked a question by someone. Ya Musa, we want to know who is the most knowledgeable person. Tell us who has most knowledge. He said, well, it's me because I have. We are thinking how he must have been thinking. He has revelation. He has the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He speaks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can there be someone more knowledgeable than him? So he says, it's me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to him. No, Ya Musa, nobody can know everything there is to know in knowledge. But we send down knowledge in pockets. So you might have one person who has excelled in one field, one who has excelled in another, the other one who has excelled in a third, one has excelled in spirituality, one is a top this, one is a top that, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses some with more than one, but not everything. So Allah wanted to show Musa alayhi salam, there is a certain pocket of knowledge which we have granted someone besides you. Musa alayhi salam was interested to know, who is this? I want to see him, because if he's around, he has to be from my ummah, because he has to follow Musa alayhi salam. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the instructions and he followed. Before we get to the instructions, let's remember one thing. We need to benefit from one another's knowledge. From amongst us, there are top doctors, top dermatologists who know what they are speaking about. Top maybe cardiologists, they are top accountants, top all sorts of people. They are top plumbers from amongst us, alhamdulillah. They are top doctors and all sorts of people. And they are also top ulama, senior ulama, successful people. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the use of all of them. And remember the ones who we need to be closest to are those who will take us into the akhirah. Those are the ulama. So in the same way, when you know you have a heart problem, what do you do? You make sure you've got a friend who's a cardiologist because you call him at one at night. He says, no problem. I'm coming free of charge. He checks you. You've got a friend. We are sometimes suffering spiritual cholesterol in our systems where we are about to die of a spiritual heart attack. We know no Ali. We are not in a link with any scholar of Islam. We have absolutely no spiritual doctor near us. In fact, when we look at them, we hate them. So what happens? We die of spiritual heart attack and we move around like a dead person. Allah speaks about this in the Quran. Allahu Akbar. Allah says, the one who moves with Noor and the one who has light is he similar to the one who's walking around like a dead man, completely dead. This means spiritually, some people are totally dead. They don't have even, they don't even know that they have so much cholesterol. May Allah protect us. Today, we are so advanced when it comes to medicine that a person has a slight pain in, on his right arm and immediately he makes an appointment. A person sees slight red discoloration on his hand and the dermatologist next thing he's there. Mashallah. And believe me, Cape Town has some of the best. So it is important for us to know that all this knowledge, it will not benefit us beyond our graves. It won't unless we have spent it in the right direction. And unless we have learned about what will benefit us beyond the death of an individual. And that will come with the ulama. This is why it is very important for us to know if we are to split knowledge into two pieces to say, that there is knowledge connected to the dunya and knowledge connected to the akhirah. That knowledge which is connected to this world and the knowledge which is connected, connected to life after death. We would come to realize that more than half of what we need is within the knowledge of the deen and religion and spirituality. Because religion you need it whilst you're alive and it's the only thing that's going to help you after you're dead. You know, you cannot bury a plumber with all copper pipes thinking that, you know, subhanallah, uh, this is what's going to help me with all due respect to plumbers and everybody else. But if that plumber was charitable, if he was a good Muslim, if he made sure that he fulfilled his charities, he assisted people, he helped out wherever he could. If the doctor, for example, had good character, good conduct, and he made sure he assisted humanitarian crises wherever they were, where, how much he could within his capacity. And he had his own quota of people that he may look to for free and so on, charitable. Then Alhamdulillah, he is earning in the process his akhirah. But how will he know that? He'll know it when he learns the deen. And he'll know it when he starts adopting what Allah has instructed. So this is something we needed to pause upon because it's our life. Many of us have spent years on end studying a certain field and we've succeeded. We've succeeded so well that we've built ourselves palaces and castles, mashallah, in the dunya. And we're driving the latest vehicles and so on. Let us also ask ourselves, how much have I done to build my akhirah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. So Musa alayhi salam was instructed to take his lunch 
and to go on a certain path on the coast. Now the lunch was made up of some items in a basket and it had in it a little fish. Some narrations say it was alive, it was in water, in a little container. Maybe that's how they used to carry it at the time because without the refrigeration and so on, they might want fresh fish. So maybe, and some narrations say, no, it was actually a dead fish. Let's take the one which says it was a fish that was not dead. It was in the water, in a little container. So as they walked, Musa alayhi salam got tired at a certain point. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ مُوسَى لِفَتَاهُ لَا أَبْرَحُ حَتَّى أَبْلُغَ مَجْمَعَ الْبَحْرَيْنِ أَوْ أَمْضِيَ حُقُوبَ Allah is making mention of how Musa alayhi salam got a certain young man with him and told him let's walk and we are going to go. Allah has given us a task. We want to walk on the coast here and we want to get to a certain place. فَلَمَّا بَلَغَ مَجْمَعَ بَيْنِهِمَا نَسِيَا حُوتَهُمَا فَاتَّخَذَ سَبِيلَهُ فِي الْبَحْرِ سَرَبَا When they got to a certain place, Musa alayhi salam was tired. And they relaxed, they sat down and he lied down. And as he lied down, it was a place where the two seas meet or the ocean met the sea, a place where the two had met. And that is where the fish suddenly got out and got into the sea and it was gone. Now one narration says the young boy saw this. He saw it. But Musa alayhi salam was asleep. So he said, I'll wait for Musa alayhi salam to get up and then I will tell him. But when Musa alayhi salam got up, he forgot. They started walking once again. And he took the basket and he carried on walking. Now the fish was gone. Their lunch was gone. After a while, Allah says, After a while, he got tired. He says to his young man, he says, you know what? Give us our lunch. Now we're very tired on this road. We've gone a long, long, long way. He says, you know, when we were back there at that rock resting, then I remember what happened to that fish, that lunch of ours. The fish found its way into the sea in a most amazing, astonishing manner. And I forgot to tell you, and it is only shaitan who made me forget. Look at how he blames shaitan. Once again, we learn this again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us understanding. It is reported that when you forget something, you say, Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin wa ala ali Muhammadin wa barik wa sallim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens your doors. You remember Allah, Allah will remind you. So when we forget something, it is from shaitan. Wa ma ansanihu illa shaitan. When you forget something good, it's from shaitan. So this is why we should constantly try and remember that which is good. How to increase your memory. Cut out everything unnecessary from your life. We're not talking of sin. Sin here is supposed to be out anyway. But we're talking of unnecessary. Some people have a habit of sitting and chit-chatting late at night. Following morning, they can't remember how many raka'at in Fajr. That is only two. They can't remember. Why? Because your mind has rewinded all night the beautiful stories you had all night and you're standing now in Salah and you just, you can't remember. Too much on, in your head. Take out some of that. This is why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, مِنْ حُسْنِ إِسْلَامِ الْمَرْءِ تَرْكُهُ مَا لَا يَعْنِي One of the signs of a good Muslim is that he leaves that which does not concern him. It doesn't concern me, throw it out. Today we are at an age where we are bothered about everybody else's life. And this is a problem wholesale. Nobody can say I'm not guilty. When we hear a juicy rumor, mashallah, it's like we squeezing the lemon. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Really, we need to be bothered about our own lives. Cut out unnecessary riffraff and see how your memory improves. May Allah open our doors. So this man, he says, look, that is what happened there when we were at the rock. So Musa alayhi salam says, That is exactly what I wanted. That is what we wanted. That is the place that I was supposed to, you know, be at where the fish comes out, where something happens. So this is what happened. So they went back following their footsteps to the exact place where this fish had gone. Allah says, They found a worshipper of ours. And they could see from his face, this man is pious. Pious man. He is known as Al Khidr. He was not a Nabi. He was not a prophet. He was only a pious man. And he had a link with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was from the Ummah of Musa alayhi salam. He was following the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam. But Allah had given him some knowledge, some knowledge that was not given to Musa alayhi salam. And this was just a point that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was proving to Musa alayhi salam. So Allah says, فَوَجَدَا عَبْدًا مِّنْ عِبَادِنَا آتَيْنَاهُ رَحْمَةً مِّنْ عِنْدِنَا وَعَلَّمْنَاهُ مِنْ لَدُنَّا عِلْمًا 
They found a worshipper of ours whom we had blessed from blessings from us and whom we had granted knowledge directly from us. Allah gave him knowledge. Musa alayhi salam says, may I please be in your company? May I follow you, please? He was walking. Musa alayhi salam says, please, may I follow you? So that you can teach me, so that I can learn a little bit of this wisdom and guidance that Allah has given you. He says, Oh Musa, you're not going to be able to bear patience with me, not with me. You will be very impatient, agitated by what you see when you are in my company. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam says, No, I will definitely be patient. You will find me, I won't question you in anything. So this man says, You are not going to be able to be patient. How are you going to be patient regarding that which you have no knowledge about? He says, Inshallah, you will find me to be patient. I won't question and you will find me not going against any of your instructions. So Allah says, he agreed and they started walking. As they were walking, they needed to cross the water. So they jumped into a boat. A boat made of planks and as they jumped into the boat the first thing they saw is a little bird a bird sitting on the plank and it dipped its beak into the water it says once or twice it dipped its beak and al khidr tells musa alayhi salam ya musa did you see this he says yes i saw it did you see the amount of water being displaced when the beak of the bird went into the ocean like this he says yes i saw it he says the comparison of the knowledge of allah with that that we have is similar to one little droplet and the whole ocean which Allah has. So Allah's knowledge is like the whole ocean and we only have a little droplet. Whatever was displaced by that beak going in and coming out. That's all. Now imagine what knowledge Allah has. Now who wants to know one description like that? There are so many descriptions of the knowledge of Allah. Some of you may have heard this before. Allah knows what has happened in the past. He knows what is happening now and what will happen in the future. And over and above that, he knows what will not happen, is not going to happen. If it were to happen, how it would have happened. That's the knowledge of Allah. Let's follow that again. He knows what is not going to happen. If it were to happen, how it would have happened. That's the knowledge of Allah. And we will see that in this story. Something that didn't happen, it was never going to happen meaning in reality, but Allah says, had we allowed it to happen, this is how it would have happened. Subhanallah. The knowledge, look at how deep the knowledge of Allah is. And this is what Al-Khidr is trying to tell Musa. So anyway, as they, as they saw that moments later, Musa alayhi salam sees Al-Khidr tear out one of the planks from the, rope, from the boat. And immediately he says, what are you doing? How can you take this plank out? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions it beautifully in the Quran. Musa alayhi salam said, Are you, you want to drown these people here? And it is reported that these people, when they saw these Musa alayhi salam and al-Khidr come, they even, according to one narration, they didn't really want recompense. They didn't want any recompense. So Musa alayhi salam is saying, look, they did us a favor. And now this is what you want to do in return. Do you want to drown them or what? So he says, قَالَ أَلَمْ أَقُلْ لَكَ إِنَّكَ لَنْ تَسْتَطِيعَ مَعِيَ صَبْرًا didn't I tell you, you will have no patience with me, O Musa? He says, hey, hey, sorry, I forgot. Musa is apologizing. He says, look, 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 I'm really sorry. And don't, it was just forgetfulness. And now I won't ask you anything. So they carried on. Allah says, from Talaqa. They were passing by. After that, they went on to the coast and they started walking again, walking quite quickly. They saw a few children playing. Al Khidr gets hold of one of them, kills them, and carries on. He says, You killing an innocent child for no reason whatsoever, nothing at all. How can you do such a bad deed? He says, Didn't I tell you you will not be able to bear patience? Ya Musa. No patience. So he says, Okay. إن سألتك عن شيء بعدها فلا تصاحبني 
قَدْ بَلَغْتَ مِنْ لَدُنِّي عُذْرًا Musa alayhi salam says, okay, okay, okay. Now if I question anything, then you don't have, I don't have to be in your company, you don't have to have me in your company. It's okay. This is the last. So they started walking. As they're walking, they entered the town. When they entered the town, they asked those people, look, we are strangers, we are a little bit hungry, we want a place, we want a bit of food. The people said, sorry, you're going to have to walk. Here, you are strangers, we are not going to entertain you at all. So what happened? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, as they were leaving, فَوَجَدَا فِيهَا جِدَارًا يُرِيدُ أَن يَنْقَضَّ فَأَقَامَهُ قَالَ لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا As they saw a wall, they saw a wall when they were leaving that was almost falling. So Al-Khidr stops for a while and made an effort to straighten the wall and solidify it, make it strong, and then he walked away. So Musa alayhi salam says, لَوْ شِئْتَ لَتَّخَذْتَ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا You know what? These people refused. These people refused to even any form of hospitality, no food, no accommodation, nothing. If you wanted, we could have told him, we'll fix your wall, pay us. Why did you fix a wall without any recompense? So Al-Khidr says, Hada bayni wa baynik. Thank you very much. It's now enough. This is the splitting between me and you. You go your way and I go my way. I know what the time is, but I think we need to spend a few moments to explain what happened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Khidr says, I will explain. I'm going to explain to you now what I did. The first thing he says, As for the, the boat, it belonged to two poor people who were making money by ferrying people to and fro. And there was a king downstream who was usurping all the good boats he was taking all the good boats so they were checking the boat if there was no defect they were taking it so i made a defect in the boat in order to save it so that they maintain their boat subhanallah point number one musa alayhi salam did not know now something that was the the king was never going to take that particular boat are you following what i'm saying because allah knew that there was going to be a hole in it but allah knew that had there not been a hole it would have probably been taken Subhanallah, it would have been taken. The next one, he says, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Wallahi, when you are earning halal sustenance, working hard, Allah will protect your wealth when everyone else's wealth is crashing. That's a lesson we learn. They say halal sustenance will always return to you. But when you've made money with the wind, it goes with the wind as well. Allah protect us. So that's one lesson we learn. Work hard, strive. Allah will grant you a little but good with barakah. And he might even open your doors further. The next lesson, he says, as for that boy who I killed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told me that had this child lived, he would have been a means of great sadness to his parents and a means of oppression to his parents. And he would have been a huge burden on his parents. So, we caused his death right here and right now. So Allah would grant the parents other children who will be better and who will be able to look after their parents and be a means of the coolness of their eyes. So this is what happened. Now this doesn't mean when you see unruly youngsters outside there, you need to engage in this type of behavior. We are not Al-Khidr and Musa alayhi salam is not with us here. But what it does mean, and I want to draw a lesson for all those who have ears. If Allah has taken your child away at a young age, consider it a blessing from Allah. Not to say the child was going to be or not going to be because we don't know anything. But it is a blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The child inshallah will be waiting in the akhirah for you and will by the will of Allah intercede on your behalf and plead with Allah to grant you Jannah. So that is a lesson. Do not become overly depressed when you've lost a child at young age. Look at the positives of it. Do not concentrate on negatives. When we concentrate on negatives, we become depressed. When we become depressed, we lose this dunya and we lose the akhirah. The third one, the last one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Al-Khidr is explaining to Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, وَأَمَّا الْجِدَارُ فَكَانَ لِغُلَامَيْنِ يَتِيمَيْنِ فِي الْمَدِينَةِ وَكَانَ تَحْتَهُ كَنْزٌ لَهُمَا وَكَانَ أَبُوهُمَا صَالِحًا فَأَرَادَ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يَبْلُغَا أَشُدَّهُمَا وَيَسْتَخْرِجَا كَنْزَهُمَا رَحْمَةً مِنْ رَبِّكَ وَمَا فَعَلْتُهُ عَنْ أَمْرِي الله أكبر He says as for the wall Underneath that wall was a treasure belonging to two young orphans whose father was a pious man. 
And had the wall fallen, the treasure would have been exposed and the people would have usurped it. So Allah instructed me to strengthen the wall so that it will only collapse the day those young people become older. Again, halal sustenance with a pious parent. The pious parent making dua for the child. Ya Allah, protect my children. We spoke about two of them today. We had one earlier with that man with the calf. And this is another one. Allahu Akbar. This teaches us a great lesson. When we put our trust in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we ourselves are pious and we are concerned about our piety, Allah will take care of our children. When we ourselves need panel beating, our children might be a write-off. Allah protect us. Yes. So this is why it's important for us. In the same way, if you have a car, a vehicle, since I said panel beating, if it needs panel beating, you will feel shy to drive it dented until you repair it. Why do we move dented spiritually? We never repair a panel beat what we need to spiritually. And then we are not shy. May Allah protect us. I hope we've understood that similarity and example. So Al-Khidr tells Musa alayhi salam, you see, I did not do this out of my own. Each item I was instructed. Why did he say that? Because according to the Sharia of Musa alayhi salam, he would have been penalized for murder. The Ten Commandments had come down. Do not murder. Now this man is saying this was the instruction of Allah. Musa alayhi salam knows it was the instruction of Allah. Because Allah told him, wait, there is someone who has more knowledge than you. And here he had the explanation. I want to end off with one beautiful Arabic grammatical benefit from the Quran. Allah says after that, he says, That is the explanation of what you could not bear patience regarding. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam says, we hope that Musa alayhi salam would have had more patience so we could have learned a bit more from that al-Khidr. And I'm sure all of us feel the same. MashaAllah. Three, little three incidents we've learned, but we could have learned much more. So the grammatical benefit is, before Musa alayhi salam knew the explanation, the term used was tastati', which means you find it difficult to understand we will explain it to you. And when everything was explained, it was so simplified that the term used is tasdir, which means this is something that you couldn't even bear the simplest of patience about. Something which is so easily understood now. And this is why the term tasdir is used. To go back, the difference between the two is tasdir shows you that there is greater difficulty to understand it. And thus that means it is so simple to understand now that it has been explained. Explained. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open our doors. As I said, we are in no rush to finish the stories of the prophets. And inshallah, if whatever we do not complete in Ramadan, we will have a part two later on by the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah grant us goodness until we meet again tomorrow with some more. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us acceptance.